Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, everyone. We are on the session five of the Emergency Battery Collab. And we're, as we're waiting for folks to trickle in, we're just going to go ahead and jump start with a little welcome and do a little recap of the last meeting. So if you feel comfortable, feel free to turn your camera on. We're going to we're going to just kind of have a little bit of group discussion for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to get started with the introduction of this session. So while we're waiting for folks to come in in this first 10 minutes, we're going to just do a little brief recap of previously on battery emergency battery collab. On session four, we talk about infrastructure and logistics. The objective was to explore the infrastructure and logistical aspect of establishing and operating a battery collective. So what we had talked about is um, we kind of did a little circle of sharing, story sharing of what we learned from our experience at the Battery Collective with People Power Solar Cooperative in the, the uh, East Bay area of the San Francisco Bay Area, the land of the Ohlone people. Uh, we had some experience started in 2020 and we shared back with you um, primarily primary takeaway was that we learned that taking action is so much more powerful than endless debate and preparing for a worst case scenario. We also transformed the daunting obstacles into valuable lessons that we shared with you. We also recognize that striving for a perfect blueprint can be paralyzing. And while focusing on realistic solution that works today can drive progress. And what we left off for you is a little takeaway question of what are your logistical wants and what are your logistical needs? Because as we shared a few times in our stories, a lot of times when we don't know what's a logistical want versus what's a logistical needs, we end up getting bogged down with a lot of the um, potential things that's going to happen, which we later realized those are ju just logistical wants when we have logistical needs, which is people have power outage right now, even though we don't have major disaster yet. So we felt like a lot of logistical wants were just um, wanting to prepare for the worst case scenario disaster. When we have real logistical needs right now, where we have um, spotty blackouts that happen in our community that we should be addressing now. So while we're waiting for folks to join in, I'd love to kind of um, take a moment to see if anyone had had a chance to think about what your logistical wants and what your logistical needs are for your community. If you share on Canva or just want, or just thought about it in your head, this is a great moment to hear from you. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm in the Mississippi area, Choctaw, um, Jackson, you know, that's the, uh, the city. Um, I think my logistical want will be uh, having a underground power lines and uh, like a fiber optic. I think that will help. I've been thinking about it for years, but since I'm not in that field, I wish I was. That would help a lot of uh, areas that are prone to have tornadoes and um, hurricanes. Not you know that's the first thing when the wind blows. I notice it gets knocked down here faster than when I was in the previous states I used to live in. Um, yeah, the infrastructure is weak down here in Jackson. Um, and they get a lot of rain, not a lot of rain, but a lot of winds, even though there's not, you know, a lot of tornadoes and stuff. And another log logistical need I was thinking um, will be more uh more people on the ground you know that work for the city the power company you know they need to take it seriously because there's families out there that really need you know these infrastructures the lower income neighborhoods are the ones that suffer the most um the power grid just needs to be very efficient for everyone um that's all I can think about right now. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. And that reminds me of um, kind of synthesizes into a lot of times what we want is the toys, the infrastructure, but what we actually need are the people. 
and the people on the ground to make these things happen. Thanks so much for sharing, Anita. Okay, go ahead, Alvin. Okay, so um, I was just gonna say that we are in South Shore and we are starting a, uh, we work in a couple of different spaces as far as cooperatives are concerned. Uh, and when it comes to rolling blackouts and things like that, um, you know, we as a neighborhood <clears throat> don't really get the same type of response. Uh, for example, I think it was last, uh, maybe late fall, early winter, and we had like two hours of uh, power outage uh, that basically paralyzed uh, our ability to do anything uh, on that particular day without food pantry distribution. Uh, everything had to be done by paper and pencil, paper and pen, as opposed to just logging people in on a computer and having them get their uh, uh, needs met for groceries and other uh, immediate need items. So uh, the problem that we have is that we have people that are already underserved uh, in the communities that we are in. And once uh, that shock of a, a infrastructure uh, compromise happens, that just uh, basically brings everything to the brink of, uh, of collapse because people are already living on the, on the margins. So the, the logistical need for us to address is that, so people who have already uh, experienced a whole lot of shortfalls in their, uh, situa in their socioeconomic condition uh, don't have to go through the added stress of a, of a power outage uh, or infrastructure uh, compromise that basically sets them back uh, even more so than what, where they already are set back from. I'm complete. Yeah, thank you, Alvin. Thank you for sharing that. That's why we got us, so we're gonna make this happen. I wanna take a moment to make sure, Kelvin, your audio is okay. Oh, we still can't hear you. Not quite sure why. Do you want to sign out and come back in? It looks like, yeah, I can read your lips. Mm -hmm. While uh, well, Kelvin fixes his mic, I, I dropped something in chat. So I just want to share with everyone um, when we talk about wants and needs. So um, especially like if, if individuals are doing emergency planning or they're doing uh, planning for a battery co-op or um, anything actually. So it's just kind of just learning to distinguish a want from a need. A lot of times people use the terms interchangeably. Um, but what I dropped in chat was like a need would be water. So if you're thinking about preparedness or whatever you're thinking about, I need water. Um, and it's going to sound funny when I say a want is clean water. Um, so people are like, oh, why is a want clean water? And then you go back to the need, which is the know-how to clean that water. So if you're in a situation where you know you need water, um, you don't necessarily need clean water. If you get any type of water, that's what you need. Um, and you also need the knowledge to take that water and to purify that water. So it's uh, good to drink. So you, and we learn things, you know, as we, as we live, but, um, one of the things is how to, when to boil water or when not to boil water for purification, um, when straining water is better, when charcoal will work, you know, how to make charcoal, like just different things that can be used in multi facets, but just some food for thought. So when we think about wants and needs, um, ultimately we're trying to refine down the needs to what the actual need is. And sometimes that's just taking a little bit extra time to think about the layer right underneath what we think the obvious is. I don't know if Kelvin's back or not. Yes, Kelvin's back. I Can hope. you hear me now? Yes, Kelvin. <laughs> well, thank you for recognizing me, me uh, for having this session and for being patient. 
Um, I am not a first responder and I don't want to be an apologist for them, but I want to lay out some things for everyone to understand what can go on. A large majority of first responders do not live in communities that are affected. So in a crisis, they have to get to where the epicenter of what occurs is. Oftentimes, people do not train in departments for the worst case scenario. Like in the case of Katrina in New Orleans, General Honoré Russell, the black man, he pointed out that one, people did not leave because they did not have money on hand and were waiting for checks. Katrina happened on a Thursday. Vehicles that they wanted to use were not available because they were not on high ground and they got flooded. So to be short, understand what these departments do during these particular events so you have an understanding of how to manage your expectation level and be aware that there are things that you can do so that in the event that you don't give FEMA five to seven days because they're driving through things and power lines are falling and people are losing command and control where they're at a joint command center themselves. So understand that we do have a responsibility to do what we're doing now with these batteries so that we can make ourselves safe but also we would benefit from understanding what they do so we can manage our expectation of them. You know, a police officer does certain things which is related to policing. National Guard, state of emergency, that comes from a higher level than the governor. And that's one reason why in Katrina, certain things didn't happen because it was a Republican president and a Democratic governor. And the Democratic governor did not want to relinquish power to a Republican president. So as we look at moving forward, understand some of these other elements so we have a better understanding and we're not mad and we don't have a different expectation level than we should about what might and might not happen. That's all I've got. Thank you, Kelvin. It's always good to kind of think about people who have different roles and what their limitations are so that we can be much more aware of what we can do. And that leads to today's session. We're in session five. We're going to talk about building collective culture and operations. And so within the next 45 minutes now, what the main objective we're hoping to achieve is to explore strategies for building an organic and sustainable collective culture within the battery collective that you're gonna be starting in order to address governance and operational aspects of things. Uh, these are all very abstract and somewhat amorphous. And today we're going to be shaking you out of your box to help spawn some culture. We're going to be highlighting collective culture and um, really to help you think about how you can come up with how we relate to each other versus emergency plan. Generally, that will be a solution that is planned out for you. So. As we do this emergency battery collab, trying to create a community backup power supply, we really need to think about how do we actually create a collective culture so we can all show up for each other and create solutions that works for all of us. So um, what we're gonna be doing today, a big bulk of our exercise and time together is going to be a lot of breakout session. So hopefully you're all ready. If you're not ready, hopefully you're moving to be ready to get into breakout session. And I'm gonna hand over to Yasir to walk us through what we're gonna be doing today. <laughs> Peace, thank you, Crystal. Um, my mic is working, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So today um, we're gonna to start with a breakout group. Um, it's, we're not gonna give you too many details. It's just basically a question you guys are all gonna take into the group. And the groups would be about maybe three or four people per group. I'm just taking a brief look here. Um, and if everyone can take the moment just to write this question down, we're going to talk about um, in your first first group, you guys are going to discuss the three different types of batteries that we talked about, the uh, lead acid, the AMG, and uh, the lithium battery. Um, and you guys are going to imagine that you guys are in a battery collective and you're trying to figure out which battery you guys are going to choose for your group. 
um, that's all. So, um, Crystal, anything about the tech in the breakout room that we need to know about? Um, before, we just wanted to pause and make sure folks have the, your notes from two sessions ago about the three types of batteries um, before we kind of throw you in. And if Kansas, you can kind of drop in chat the problem so then folks have it before we kind of separate it from each other. And just taking a moment to make sure you all have the three batteries and you're going to be um, sent into the breakout rooms with people. Um, hold on, let me just redo this real quick. Okay. And I can repost it when people go in the breakout rooms. I forget how that exactly works. Uh, yeah, you won't be able to repost it when you get in the breakout room. So I will say it again. We reviewed three different types of batteries, lead acid, AMG, and lithium. Which battery would you choose for your group or community? Great. And so what was going to happen, it was going to spend about eight minutes total to spend to chat and for you to figure out the answer. At the end of seven minutes, you'll get 60 second countdown. So once the 60 second is down, we'll all be sent back here. If this sounds good, um, and I don't see any questions in chat or hands up, then the room will be open and you are ready to get in to your breakout groups. Ah, peace everyone, is everyone back? <laughs> I think so, I think so. Um, so quickly, there's a, a fun fact. Um, the fun fact is people who use Zoom so 40% of them have not seen themselves yet. So just a little fun fact there. <laughs> Talk about deducing things and what does that mean, right? So you have people who don't turn their camera on. I mean, 40% of the people haven't seen themselves. So you're like, okay, they haven't seen themselves yet today. So um, anyway, so. <laughs> question is now, were you able to collectively agree on something? Uh, does any group want to, to take the mic and, and go first? And I'll keep the, the, the question pointed. Were you collectively able to agree upon something? I saw Eugene stand up. Yeah, I think we, we were able to agree on the AGM. Um, and the reason being, even though lithium ion over the long term is probably cheaper, but you have to outlay about three times the price initially. But since we're, we're just starting out with this whole concept of loaning out stuff um, and possibly possibly some degree of abuse, if, if, lead, if AGM batteries are dropped, they pretty much don't have any problem but lithium ion batteries, because I work for, I help pedicabbers um, maintain their batteries. And the pedicab, you know, jostles over rough roads and everything. And it, a couple of the lithium batteries got destroyed that way. So to start out, I would, we, we agreed to vote for um, AGM. Thank you. Sorry. Any other, sorry. Great. Down a little bit, you were saying the lithium gets sad if it's dancing too much. The the cheaper lithium ions use what's called a um, a thin pouch cell. It, it's the the contents of the cell is just a very thin aluminized pouch, and those pouches can get deformed in the shape if they are jostled up and down a bunch, like on a a rough road, like, you know, if you have one in your car and you're on a dirt road in Alaska somewhere, it could, it could possibly cause damage in the case where you buy um, cheaper manufacturer brands, which, which we were doing for the pedicab, uh, ordering them on eBay from China um, at a cheaper price, but they, they didn't last very well under that kind of stress. So that's a, a good note there. We didn't go, actually go over that, but if you guys have ever flown on like the airlines, there's a little thing that says, are you carrying lithium batteries or something of that nature? 
they're actually not allowed allowed in the cargo holding area for that very reason. Um, anyone else would like to share? Question is, were you able to collectively agree upon something? And that's the question. And it's okay if not. If not, tell us why not. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually, now I'm thinking, were you not able to collectively agree upon something? Any group not able to come to an agreement? Well, our group had an interesting issue with command and control. One of the members, he kept going in and out. So in breaking up, we couldn't necessarily hear what his thoughts were, but we thought that the lithium battery would be one, expensive, and two, it its rating is that it takes a long time to charge. And we talked about the AGM battery and we talked about how it could be transported and having it at a very inexpensive price would enable us to you know, perhaps lose it, not get it back, it breaking, whatever. So we had thought about this um, AGM battery as well. And anyone else? One thing that we talked about in our group was potentially having like an ideal and then a fallback Right. And so honoring not wanting to speak for other folks. So so one of the, the example that I shared is the, the group that I've been building with. We're trying to have as many lithium because that's that's what we had experience with, like lithium battery based, like building solar generators um, at as many as possible within community. And then also having smaller um, lithium batteries uh, with with solar panels. Um, but if that breaks, I can't fix a lithium battery, right? And I'm not gonna be able to get one like in the weeks right after a, a bad, bad hurricane. But I will have access some type of way to a car battery, an RV battery, a boat battery, right? Like those are things, even if a tree fell on the car across the street from my house, there might be a battery that we can then hook up, right? So even if I'm not excited about lead acid batteries for all the reasons that they're complicated, I want and need to know how to hook that up as my backup plan. Because even if it's not the ideal, it's, it's profoundly more accessible if things go wrong. Thank you and thank you for sharing that. I like the out of the box thought process there. And Ida? Hands up. Yeah, uh, that was awesome. Thanks, Ann Meredith. Um, something, and actually thinking back also on what you said earlier, you don't need the water, you need the knowledge on how to do what you can do with the water. So in that kind of thinking, the knowledge and how to work with those batteries that you can find out in the wild, but at the same time, something that we uh, discussed short, briefly was like, I mean, if the money is coming from a grant or something, I'm going to get the best thing that I can get that's going to last the longest. <laughs> That'll be cool, too, to have a resource for as long as it can last. It can be inside. There's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of benefits to having a really nice thing. Um, but also the knowledge to be like, yeah, I'm going to go take that little scooter. Like, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. And with that, we're going to move into our second breakout group. Um, if you guys want to breathe for a second here. Um, second, second breakout group, if you guys have um, a pen or paper, if you guys can just write down the question or memorize the question, because we'll get you in the group um, pretty briefly. Um, so the question is, if you guys can collectively think about what uh, is the number one unanswered question from this learning series that you have. This is our fifth time together. We have just this is for your small group to come up with one top unanswered question. Number one unanswered question. Yep. The one that's just like, damn it, you know, darn it, they didn't answer this question. Please, we want to know. And Thanks. then we're gonna break out for an additional just seven minutes. 
and then same same way we went last time. And then we'll check back in. This time we are going to try to hit each group and ask what that question is, and we'll go from there. Great. So folks ready? Seeing no questions in chat or hand raised. Thank you, Gabrielle, for posting the question in yes, chat. The room you. will be open up yeah. and you'll go right back into the same group you were in. What's the question? The question is your for your small group to come up with your number one unanswered question from this collapse so far. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Peace and welcome back, everyone. So uh, we're going to do this uh, two ways. So one, if you guys can drop, um, if you have a chance just to go ahead and type your question, whatever that number one unanswered question was in the chat, we'll start there. Um, and for the individuals who are in a group who are not typing, if you guys can, who wants to go first? <laughs> Sounds like we answered all our questions. This is great. <laughs> I can share for my group. Yes. Um, I think, yeah, two of the questions fell into the battery itself. So one, when, when can we get a battery? <laughs> if, if we get a battery through this. Um, and then how those batteries might work in inclement weather, specifically in winter storms. Is that something that need to be concerned about and then my personal question was how do we communicate with people that we have this resource once we get it okay so when can we get a battery and then how do we uh, communicate with people in your community you're saying when you have the battery? Yes. Okay. And then weather condition, weather. Um, has anyone thought about, you know, we, we're all in this course, we're all doing this coursework to, to understand like how to build a community, how to set up a community, how to set up a battery collective. Has anyone given any thought about how to set up a battery collective? How do you- Yeah, I have, <laughs> of course. Uh, Kelvin, is it okay if, if, if um, I ask Nick, Nick raise his hand as well, Kelvin? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see that. Do you think? Oh, no, no, no. You guys are both at the exact same time, but just want to spread the mic. That's all. Yeah, I, I think so. I We recently set up a tool library in Lexington, Kentucky, where I live. Um, it's pretty new, uh, but I think that, um, yeah, I think, you know, people people are a lot like confused about what it is or you know I, I like went to a art fair this weekend and I was handing out I handed out like 250 just like quarter sheet flyers about the tool library and people kept kind of like you know they, they thought it was kind of too good to be true or like didn't quite make sense to them and I think that the I think that an emergency battery um, works could like live in the tool library as like an ongoing regular resource that people take advantage of for like parties or like screenings in the park, movie screenings in the park or going camping or whatever they wanna use, you know, off-grid power for, um, but then also be available in times of emergency to be kind of um, distributed equitably. And I think that the hard part is like figuring out what those decision making is going to be like, because we're going to have maybe like 10 batteries or something, and maybe 100 people, 200 people know about the tool library and need power. And we're going to figure out how to process those requests or like group people together, like we're kind of talking about here. Um, so, anyway, I think that my personal feeling is that like a tool library, an equipment library, a library of things uh, is a great uh, home for kind of organizing the, the, battery collective overall that's, good. that's a good idea lending tool lending library and then adding it to the tool lending library it's uh anyone see um any other ways or any other questions that came out of the groups looks like there's a few coming in the chat okay 
anyone want to vocalize? I just don't want to have to read chat and then try to, anyone want to speak up and say, hey, this was our number one question that wasn't answered. No questions. Okay. Um, I'll take one from chat. Alice says, one question was, what are the various end of life solutions for the three types and the environmental and human act, uh, impact, toxicity, et cetera? Can they be recycled? Um, so if I'm understanding the question correctly, it's at the end of the life of the battery. You've used the battery 10 years, three years, five years. Um, the battery no longer has charging capabilities. What do we do with the battery? Um, does anyone know like about lead acid batteries or a AGM batteries or, or lithium batteries? Like what happens toward the end of their life? Eugene. Yeah, um, lead acid batteries and AGM batteries are virtually 80 to 90% recyclable. All of the lead inside, there's, there's an established industry to recycle these kind of batteries for many decades. And when you buy a new battery, um, you're discounted $20 or $20 to $40 if you return the old battery to the store where you buy the new one and they'll recycle it. They'll ship it off to get recycled. Now, lithium ion, you know, it, it's made out of cobalt, which is what children are mining in, in Africa. And it's got, it's got some health effects the way it's mined so so cheaply with no protection, you know. Um, I just read an article yesterday though that in the laboratory they're they're starting to develop recycling methods for lithium ion batteries. It's not widespread um, as a you know on massive scale yet, but hopefully it's something that will, will be in the near future. Thank you. Um Next question I see in chat is going to be, well, you guys let me know if I'm missing something too. Our main question was how exactly to make the batteries. Uh, we didn't have a clear understanding on how to do that. Um, does anyone have an understanding on how to make the batteries? Um, lithium ion batteries have a, a rather complex circuit board inside of them called a BMS, Battery Management System. I'm sorry, Eugene, I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Okay. I, I think what the, my, as I'm reading the question and trying to understand what the question is, I think that the question is more about how to make a backup battery, not the actual battery itself. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So, anyone um, have any thoughts about that, how to make a backup battery? Or here's a question, the components that you might need to make a backup battery. Okay. Um, I believe, sorry, Alice. Sorry. I was gonna answer your question. I think if you if you watch the video, I forget what the name of it is, but on the, in our canvas, that you show the battery and you, um, there was one video, right? And you show the, essentially the three components that go into the milk crate. You would think which, a pan is a pan. What happens to the sorry. Oh. 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 Oh, I don't know who that was. Well, we got it. Was that Alice? It might have been. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to keep it moving with Alice. Alice is absolutely correct. The video, yes, does uh, depict the components that are necessary to make the battery. I think we also shared a flyer on um, the components to make the battery as well. So, and we'll be diving deeper into that during our office hours. So if you have like a sheet of paper and you actually want to write down like, I have a battery, I got the components, how do I hook them up? We're gonna hop into that deeply into the, um, when we get into our office hours. So if you have those components in front of you, ideally we could probably build one over the video chat. So we'll see if someone can have those components. And if so, we can do that collectively in office hours or individually in office hours. That'll be next, today, Tuesday? Next Tuesday. 
Uh, next question in chat, and this will be our final question. Uh, Anne oh, has her... and Meredith. Sorry. Thank you. Yes, Anne. Hey, Silas. Um, I know a bunch of y'all have already been building with them, but the footprint project, so doing real similar work to what y'all do. Um, I mean, they come around to different communities. They came to New Orleans after Ida. Um, they're supporting Dear One um, in Maui right now. They're, they're, they go all around. They're in Puerto Rico anyway. But they, they both come and support with um, building up solar whole um, community support hub pieces uh, and honoring what communities do and don't want being invited in, all these pieces. But they also come in and in our community, uh, they came in and collaborated with local groups and we built solar generators ourselves, right? So they would come with the with all the bits and bobs, right? So there's the inverter. And if we buy that solar panel on market, it's like seven or eight grand for what we would use at community hub. All the bits and bobs are like four to five grand. And so we do the few thousand dollars of connecting the wiring and learning, but then that also meant that we learned also how to not just build it, but how to maintain it. And then those solar pants, solar generators stayed in community. So much respect to like overlap between um, and just as another community resource, uh, but they have as well, um, some multilingual kind of popular education resources on their website that some of the, the how to. So just as another side of like, um, I, I only saw like PDFs and uh, slideshows and stuff. I don't know if they have more informational videos and things, but the Footprint Project, I shared the website footprintproject.org. Um, but just as another, another um, group to build with, connected. Thank you very much, Ann. Yeah, so one of the things that I will just, I'm going to end with this and then I'm going to pass it on to Kansas is that um, there are a lot of uh, resources out there, tons of resources. So please hop online, hop on YouTube, just type in there like emergency battery, like there'll be a video that shows you how to do everything step by step as well. Um, what those videos miss is the community aspect, um, is that self-governance aspect, is the aspect of how to build community around that and how to support community around that. It's fun to like hop in your garage and tinker with things. Um, it's even more fun to hop in your garage and tinker knowing that it's going to support your community uh, in a time of need or support yourself or support your family in a time of need. So making those connections is really what this course has been about and will continue to be about. Um, but yes, we pull in those resources as well. Uh, and we definitely encourage people to go out and get those resources. Um, and with that, I'll pass it over to Kansas. Thank you so much, everyone. So you might have noticed today was a little bit different. We had a lot more breakout rooms. We weren't just up here uh, presenting something. And this is uh, a big, this is part of the lesson too. And part of the transition that we'll be going through into this, this office hours uh, part of the series, right? So instead of us being the experts and giving you all of the knowledge, right? What we experienced today was collectively coming together with people that you either loosely know or maybe have even communicated with on this course and discuss various problems with some of what we've learned and some with that is personal experience and from where you are. And we learned how and practiced what it's like to talk to other people, listen to other people and try to synthesize information together, right? When we all came back into the breakout rooms, I don't know if you noticed, but we didn't answer any of the questions. We all just pushed them back on to the community and you. And this highlights that, you know, communities are built of different strengths. You know, some people have technical strengths. Some people are good at uh, rallying the community, um, communicating, understanding command and uh, control, logistics, all of these things. People have different expertise and knowledge. And the only way that we can really tap into them is getting into rooms and really talking about it and discussing the issues. Um, so we... Uh, emphasize a lot about building this collective culture. We also like highlighted this idea of thinking outside the box, if you will, about wants and needs and how they can be addressed and practiced in our communities and in our um, collectives and our groups. Um, so yeah, so again, um, we learned 
the value of what it's like to maybe not even come to a consensus, right? And have uh, multiple different opinions. And as we go forward, th this is something we're gonna be comfortable with and understand how to uh, embrace, but also make pragmatic choices and experiment and test things. So anyway, um, that's the conclusion from today. Again, thank you so, so much for, oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, thank you for joining us. Did you have something else to add? <laughs> I just want to add real quick. Yeah, so so just take a moment to reflect on the two breakout sessions that you were in with your group to just think about how that conversation went. We're so used to getting into breakout sessions on Zoom. So thinking about how that conversation went, no good or bad. It's all about like, how did the conversation come about? How did you all approach the prompt that was thrown at you? How did you, how did it come in when it comes to like everyone sharing their thoughts what kind of space was created to create that when people are having different ideas that you didn't think about or you disagree with how did you show up so these are things of course you all are a lot of you all are already organizers and facilitators that you're already really well versed with and we created this space really just want you to be have having an opportunity to take notes because a big part of our objective here is to get a sense of um, what exactly it may well, exploring strategies to build this organic and sustainable collective culture. So want to want you to take a moment to just think about these two and think about what Kansas said and think about like, what does consensus mean? Doesn't mean it's good, doesn't mean it's bad, but how do you create that space for all of you to bring in what you know and what you can go out and look for on the internet and bring to the group? I'll hand it back to you, Kansas. Just wanna add that, emphasize the great points that you made. No, thank you. Um, I mean, I think that's that's honestly basically it. I just wanted to actually hand it over to Tom and Shareable to, uh, yeah, for some announcements. Great. Thanks, everyone. Um, so yeah, it was perfect timing that Nick brought up the tool library and and um, and then uh, we also have uh, another note about that from Alice. So our next collab is going to focus on starting a library of things like a tool library. And it's going to be a little bit more extensive. It's going to go over the course of a year. And instead of having uh, weekly sessions, they're going to be monthly sessions. Uh, and the idea is basically to help support the um, folks to start new libraries of things from scratch, uh, and then also to improve existing libraries of things, to be able to grow them, to be able to upskill. And so it'll be a field strengthening activity as well. Uh, and so there's a link I just put in the chat onto the, the deep dive um, just to find out more information and to um, sign up to get updates when those things come out. We're going to be launching at the end, at the beginning of October, so it will uh, start after this collab is over. Um, but I also want to just put a, a link in the chat. So there's a limited number of uh, paid fellowships that are going to be part of this program, and Center for Biological Diversity has agreed to sponsor a open fellowship. So there's the last link that I just put in the in the chat. Um, if you're interested in learning more about that, it's it's paid and and it's they're actually building out basically a, it's a paid internship where the bulk of the work in the internship will be participating in the fellowship and to start a library of things, and they'll also be providing additional support to be able to help start that. Um, and it's not based on any single location. So those are the the links to find more information, and you can always uh, send messages to either myself or Rome about that as well. And we'll throw these same links into Canvas. Awesome. Thank you. And for next session, it'll be the same time, same day. Yep. And uh, when you feel ready with your collective culture to put things onto paper, we'll also be sharing our operating agreement on the canvas for your reference. Um, and um, we'll be starting office hours. So we can talk about these different forms and different questions you guys have brought up today. Yep. And then just to address the question about the batteries real quick, um, that so we are essentially over the, over the office hours, Everyone who's participating will be working on their plan for launching their emergency battery network. Once you've set that plan, um, we will then be just sending out the batteries. So that's still a few weeks away. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a and happy that's Tuesday. That's a wrap for session five. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Same time, same day. We're going to be working on things yeah, together. Good. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good evening, y'all. Peace. Take care, everyone. Okay. Take care. Take care.
I guess I'll hop off. Bye, everyone. Yeah. You can join us later. Yes, so can I ask a question? No, of course. Yeah. Quick question. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, uh, our block is throwing a, a block party over the Labor Day weekend. Would we have, I was thinking it would be great to like bring the battery and then start the conversation. Would we have our batteries by that time or would there be one that I could even borrow to share? And well, then Alice, you're in the Bay Area. You can <laughs> certainly yeah, we, yeah. work with us. Yeah. Kansas, you want to drop the email for the battery collective for Alice? Um, is that just mine or? No, the battery collective email. 